Word. Welcome to the B-Side Word. We are a group of friends from around the world discussing interesting articles. I am Devon, host, oh. Emma, host, oh. well, CJ, host, and Maxi, host, are here. I thought you were giving yourself special, like, I am Devin, the host, with my guest, Emma. Oh. <laughs> I, f- I thought he just gave us all the surname of host. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> I'm Devin, host. This is um, Emma, host. With a that host is CJ, family. host. <laughs> we're the host family. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, what is our uh, first article? Okay. Well, our first article is I've named it drone fishing. Can you guess what it's about? Fishing of a drone. <laughs> no. So, well, yes, but no. <laughs> It is the coolest video I've ever seen. <laughs> so. So I was right. And then you said. <laughs> this guy in Victoria, Australia, was they him and his friend, an electrician friend, made a drone with a seat, like a chair suspended from it. And he sits in the chair and it lifts him up over the river and he goes fishing and catches a fish and comes back in. Get and out of here. N- like <laughs> legit. And they posted a video and it went viral. That's Have you I haven't actually I've watched a bit of the video. But this is the it's video. The, it's, it's the coolest video I've ever seen. Oh, oh. Is it oh, like and it's got a it's got a VB. He's got a beard with him as well. Yeah. That must be a it's pretty big drone. It's like a uh, it's obviously a very powerful it's drone, but he's sitting on like a camper chair, and then oh it's got like a, a cup holder where he has his beer. So he has a beer in one hand, oh. fishing rod in the other hand. Yeah. And then the drone, like they have these friends are on like the grass bank, <laughs> fly him yeah. over the river, and he just casts out his fishing rod. Yeah. Are you watching it as we speak, right? Yeah, yeah we are. I'm, I'm going to keep explaining. Yeah, for keep listeners going, as well. keep going. S- so, so yeah, he just puts out his fishing rod, starts reeling it in, and then he actually catches a fish. And like the excitement of him and there's like four of his mates on like the bank are just like, oh my God. Oh. But the guy's like playing it so cool. He's just like, yeah, I got my beer. I got a fish. I'm flying a drone. And what? And then the drone comes back, safely lands him back on the shore. They got the fish and then they just start popping champagne. Why is the one guy like... wearing like a beekeeper outfit? I don't know. But um... I, didn't, I missed that. <laughs> He's fully like, okay, I wonder how long the drone can stay in the air for, with, like carrying a human. Uh, depends on the battery. Is that is it battery? Or is it, I'm guessing it's battery. All the drones that I know, they're all battery. Yeah, it looks, it looks like battery. Yeah. Oh my God. It looks like battery. But it's got like, it looks like it's got about t- 10 propellers, like doubled. Yeah, that's. I didn't realize that drone was so big until the start of it, where you see, um, it's actually more like one, two, three, four, five. Oh, the propellers are they individual drones as well? Okay, no. I so. just realized that was the, that, that was their skinny mate that they put on the drone. <laughs> <laughs> you don't put me on there. <laughs> <laughs> I was a skinny mate. <laughs> okay, uh, who weighs the less? You do. <laughs> you don't test dummy. <laughs> well, the Civil okay. Aviation Safety Authority is investigating oh, this footage. PC, the PC. <laughs> the PC. No. Uh, what? They That's not that. political correctness. Uh, the fun police, sorry. Well, the what's a PC, po- that, man? The, uh, police constable. Oh, no, police constable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can take your police constable, you know, just turn us out. <laughs> so the fun police is uh, investigating, are they? Yeah, well, they don't know if any rules have actually been breached. Um, if people do breach those rules, they can be fined like $10,000. So here are the rules for flying drones. This, I guess this would be in Australia. I don't know how much it would differ around the world. Okay, so no flying more than 120 metres above ground. Well, that's pretty high. Can you tell me the most interesting rule? Oh, Is there an interesting see. rule? Because like, <laughs> there's a lot of boring rules there. Okay. If your drone weighs <laughs> more, no, that's not interesting. No flying at Is night. Is this how you got for your exams at the school, Dev? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, um, what is the fact that they're actually going to ask a question about? <laughs> <laughs> no flying over or above people at festivals, sporting ovals, beaches, okay. parks, busy roads. Can, can I, t- from, from a YouTuber, uh, there was a YouTuber that made drones very, very popular. Who? Casey, Casey Neistat. Oh, yeah. He used to, because he's a cinematic 
vlogger, right? And he used to um, fly these drones over buildings, over like houses, and and he used to crash them sometimes. He used to crash them on top of NYC like buildings and stuff, right? Oh. And he had to go up the buildings and collect them. In the end, I think he got in trouble with the uh, aviation authorities in America, and they said, and then he pretty much cut all drone drone flying usage. Yeah. And he, because he used to go to the piers, and honestly, the footage was amazing. The, like what Casey did with the drones and how he used to interact with the it was was go watch it. That's what I'm trying to say. Go oh. watch it. It's, it. Hold on, are they? Is he paying us? <coughs> Who? Because Casey got. <laughs> I have to pay. I have to pay him back. I was gonna say, don't watch it. He's not paying Why us. Why are you paying him back? Because I feel like he started the the snowball effect of me wanting to do stuff. Oh, what, you're creating. paying him back. I well, thought you meant literally. You're gonna be paying him. Well, money. stuff him. He didn't mention us. We're not mentioning him. He didn't don't know. don't watch him. He didn't know. Don't us. watch him. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, watch us. <laughs> stuff Casey. <laughs> Casey should learn how to drive his drones. <laughs> and he would have been in trouble. <laughs> Idiot. So now, now, right? What I know, what I know from drones, how to drive, uh, uh, fly drones, you have to mark out a um, lifting, uh, lift off, lift off site. So you have to cone an area mm -hmm. around the drone, the lift off site. Mm -hmm. And that's where you, you take off and you land. And then you have to actually, I think it was in Canada, the one in Canada. So I'm mixing all the rules all together. You're totally But mixing. in Canada, you have to um, call up the avi aviation authority to say that you're flying in that area. Like, is this if you just take your kid to the park and you've got like a little drone? You have to call them and say, hey, I'll be flying the drone. Oh, Takeoff is there's there. There's different kind of drones. Like there's, <laughs> there's, the under, there's a weight class, your weight class. for drones oh. as well. So there's a weight, if there's only weighs X amount, like less, like 500 grams or a kilo, like you can buy them from just most shops and they fly around your house mainly or in your garden yeah and then yeah. anyone that's over a certain weight is it and then anyone that can reach a certain height has extra restrictions i had a friend that um we at my university he was like an aviation student and he had a plan to like he wanted to build this rocket so it's not quite a drone but he wants to build this rocket and just test like you know he wants to fly it up as high as he can and it'll come back down it'll get some footage on the gopro and because yeah. we're quite well, not that close maybe like 10 miles away from heathrow airport he has to like Tell them he's doing it, and they're like, "Okay, cool." Oh. Yeah, it's this long, long, long process of getting this approval. It took a, like it took a couple of months, and on the day, the rocket didn't come out the ground. Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> like, <laughs> it failed. <laughs> oh. He wedged it in the ground too much, so it just didn't. It was just like went like all the fuel and stuff come out, whatever fuel he was using, and then it just like done a ninety degree fall on the ground, and it just like powered itself into the ground oh, instead of going up into the air. Sucks. Oh my god! So what? Like okay, so is that an easy fix, or he's like, right, I'm done, finished. That took me a year to build. No, you never just doing don't it give, again. You don't give up. I wouldn't anyway. I just not gone. Oh, he, first failure. Did. I didn't. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> what a because critter. He, like that one day, he had an application. He has like, this one day, this time period. He built this drone that took him, like it, the, drone, the, the drone, the rocket itself might not have took loads of hours, but it took a lot. It took like, it probably like two working weeks, you're going to be like 80 hours or something. So it wasn't like he could quickly put some more fuel in and do it again. Uh, he had to go back and do that 80 hours and then do the application process. Which, which and he was, was like, like another two months. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, yeah, I'm done. Oh no. So. Well, that's like the space one where it, Tes was it Tesla? Yeah. Elon, 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 Musk. Elon, Elon, Musk. Elon, Elon Musk. That's his brother. <laughs> Elon. I, I, I call him the musky one. <laughs> With his, you know, spacey one. And then the first one just disintegrates, basically. Yeah. You'd just be like, oh my God. Um, How many times did they actually try to take off with the human on on the on the, the video chair. showed them like using other stuff yeah. first like a bicycle yeah i saw some i saw the drone crash into the tree a few <laughs> times oh, god i, I thought they were trying yeah. to cut the top of the trees off <laughs> well that's what the <laughs> tree that's trimming, why like yeah. i thought that's actually not a bad idea tree trimming <laughs> that's a good business you fly a drone cj's on idea ah. that's a but yeah, do the it. propellers trim the tree or are you attaching blades? No, oh, that blades. Could be, no, that Emma. Could be. <laughs> no. No, because if you're attaching blades and it falls down, now you've got like a motorized blade chopper thing. Yeah. A chainsaw. Yes. <laughs> so if that falls down. <laughs> 
a chainsaw that is not attached to a human hand. Yeah, that, that will most likely stop working. You'd have to put like a safety protocol where yeah. if it comes apart. Kill switch. Just comes, oh, comes safety up. gone mad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I have to be PC. Are you... That are must you, be a thing. Are you, uh, are you game enough to do this? I would sit One on it. One minute warning. Because, well, okay. 100%. Because he's over water. He falls. The worst thing that's going to happen is the drone falls on his head. <laughs> yeah, with those spinning propellers. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> think about it. Yeah, but, yeah, but the, the propeller's on the top half of the drone, right? I mean, it could okay. rotate and land upside down. Yeah, but... I was going to say, it can't spin, you know? Uh, I mean, if you're going to be scared of that, then you can't do anything in life, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dev, your next article is. Men avoiding women at work. <laughs> Are you subconsciously saying something about yourself? Huh? <laughs> With this article? What do you mean? Men avoiding women at work? Yeah, I Are think... You, are you trying to subconsciously say that you avoid <laughs> women at work? Do you feel intimidated by women at work, in the workplace? I have no women at work. I'm sure There's there has a to couple, be tradies. Yeah, I'm sure there has to be women at your work. There's the... Um, uh, do you feel intimidated about them? <laughs> Can I answer your question? <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, obviously... You've chosen Ask this, your question. You've chosen this article for a reason. Ask your question. Is it because they intimidate you? No. Do intelligent women to intimidate you? No. Okay, so so you don't know what what are you oh, saying? Oh, CJ's thinking it's because of intelligent. Ah, okay. CJ's going the route of yeah. They're avoiding them because okay. they don't want to be out intelligenced. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. so it's Made about no worry over here though. So, <laughs> so, so this is about right a politician in America. That refuses to have dinner. No, it was he refused to be alone with a female reporter in a vehicle, one on one. Oh, you know this because article. Because he respects his wife. You you know this article. Yes, I heard. You're about just this being a dick. Yes, I am. Okay, so <laughs> that's one case. Yeah, <laughs> and I I can understand because there are a lot of um stuff coming up now. Okay, um, like like the Me Too movement of things like that. Is that what you're saying? Like, from yeah, my, my so understanding, the female reporter wanted to do um, just have that's a discussion. the title of your article. Men now avoid women at work. Another sign we're being punished for hashtag Me Too. Yeah. Okay. So there was the new study. It's actually due to be published in the Journal of Organizational Dynamics, and it found out that the Me Too movement has made men more reluctant to interact with their female colleagues. So um, some of the research that they've done says that 27% of men said they would avoid one-on-one -on -one meetings with female co-workers like that politician doesn't, will never go for a dinner alone yeah. um, with a woman unless it's his wife. 21% um, of men said they'd be reluctant to hire a woman that would require them to have like close interaction. Like if you have to go, like go away for business meetings or whatever. And 19% they would be said they'd be reluctant to hire an attractive woman. But what's interesting is that data last year, um, it was the 21% the that said they don't want to be in close interaction was only 15% last year and it's gone up already this year. Yeah, so, men are scared. Yes, but uh, so, sorry. Say so that last bit again. That what was the, it changed? So last did... year, only fifteen percent said they'd be reluctant to hire a woman if they knew that they were going to have to be in close contact with them, like business travel, for uh, example. Whereas this year, that's gone up to twenty-one percent. So in one year, it's risen six percent. So from two thousand and eighteen to two thousand and nineteen. Yes. Is the Me Too movement, is it bigger this year than last year? No, but I think it's just, I don't know. I just I just wonder like what if, like if this is actually caused by Me Too or if this is, like if I would, I would I think me, be weird about working one-on-one -on -one with a woman more because of what it looks like for my girlfriend than I would that I think she's going to claim I sexually harass her. Hmm. I, I think it's a bit of both. I think it's made more men more <coughs> like um, conscious of it, like how they act around women. Yeah. I don't like. I just, I you just reckon? feel like yeah. when Me Too movement came out, like I had no worries in my head ever of being around girls. And yeah, me neither. Being a victim of Me Too, I wonder like what kind of men do have this, 
I understand there probably are some situations where women are trying to get a payday, especially in America, because they have a different culture when it comes to suing and stuff. But mm-hmm. like, I feel like the men, which I think if you have a very big problem with Me Too, like, I wonder what that... Like, it's just so much bad stuff happening that you needed the Me Too, like the minor things of some people to try and like get a payday out of it. For me, oh, for me, it doesn't warrant like yeah the the complaints if you know what I mean as in like people claiming that bad things happen when they weren't that bad is that what you mean uh yeah so when yeah. people say like uh they can falsely say oh this person touched me in the wrong way yeah um when they didn't touch them at all because mm-hmm. they know it's word against word and they might get something out of it and yeah. or if someone says like it happens in politics more or like celebrity area where they can say i really want to defame this person or like I want to like make it put a, like a strike on his name mm-hmm. and they can just, even if like it's, it may not be um, innocent until proven guilty, right? But in the media sort of age we're in, if you that's like, not try possible and take sometimes. someone to court over it, then that's it. You're now labeled as a person that went to court because of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like even a if blemish you... that stays forever. Mm-hmm. So I mean, um... if, if it happened to us two, Siege, mm-hmm. it's not, it's like, It'd be a blemish, but the, not many people will know about it. Whereas if it's like let's if it's if, if it's a super sports superstar, mm-hmm. that's a blemish on them, which affects them dramatically because yeah. of the the sponsorships. Okay, the, it, all that it, kind it of would stuff. also affect me and you dramatically. You have to, uh, you'd have to think why. Okay, if let's say money wise, no money wise employment. Who wants to hire someone? You don't tell them. They're gonna find out. If 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 you weren't um if you weren't uh what do you call it criminally convicted, or convicted charged. Yep. yeah charged, charged or anything you don't yeah. have to say anything I know but they do do research on your name with yeah. Facebook and social media these days yeah like they'll type in your name through your social media account and go through your posts and what's happened so there's a good possibility they'll find it which could affect I think you. it's just it's easier to hide it right like if if I, I, I if so. I get accused of something like this it's not going to be in the news. It's not likely to be in the news, um, but if um, somebody is bigger, it's definitely going to make the news, you know? Yeah. But still, if someone wants to look for it, they can. Like, I see a story about yeah. Trump every single day of a new allegation against him. And most of them, <laughs> to be honest, as much as I'm not saying I agree with anything Trump does, but most of them are just pointless people just trying to make a story out of nothing yeah. because it's Trump. No one wants to make a story out of nothing because if they think that's probably nothing if Maxi did it. They're not going to make a story just in case. They've got no agenda, you know? But anytime it's a celebrity, there's always an agenda because it's like, my story is going to get me fame as a journalist because I was the first one to call out this. If it happens to be wrong, I'll oh, never mind it was wrong. But if it was right, I was the first person on this story and I was the one that saw it first. And, yes. you know, I can say I knew from the start. So I, I feel like journalists and like should be held accountable. Let's say you were famous, I was a journalist, and I suspect you've done something wrong. And I've gone and released this article saying you have. They should be held accountable for what they've written. But they can word it so it's like like with allegations. They just they say, say allegedly. Yeah. yeah. They can use those yeah. words but and then I've now tarnished your image. I've now tarnished your mm-hmm. everything like how you make it. They living. could be sued for defamation. But I just, I just said they the wording that they use, <laughs> if they mm-hmm. use the correct words, it's not they're not saying that you are a, a, a person. They're just saying this is what's been reported. Yeah, but Whenever now someone looks at you, they think of that, which I think is wrong. But it doesn't matter because they haven't said that you are. That's what I'm saying. The words that they use, they're not saying you are a certain person. Mm. It doesn't matter what you think the article may mean. They're, they're saying, a, they're talking a certain way. You know mm. what I mean? I, I know what you're saying, language. but yeah. it, should, it shouldn't be able to do that to someone when they haven't done it. They That's should, why they, they said allegedly. Like there's words. Uh, yeah, but I get, no, when, I get when you're it. saying allegedly... You're still kind of implying that people have. go, "Oh my gosh, he's been caught up in this scandal or yeah. whatever." But then but that means you have to control what people think. You're, you're not, not in. You're not. What? What do you mean control what people think? You can't. You can't control what people think. What do you mean? Like, so so, if, uh, so this person can basically say what they want about you, even though it's false, and just put allegedly in front of it. No, they can definitely get done. They can <laughs> no, definitely get done because we had that Australian no, I, actress. I allegedly. I allegedly. Think that Ernest grew a beard. It's not true. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. <laughs> no. I would sue his ass, Ernest. You get what I mean? Like, no, no. You, the journalists can mm. definitely get done. 
Yeah, they. Yeah, hundred like, percent. Like Tommy it, Robinson in the UK who got put in prison because he oh, was um, reporting on a case of uh, uh, people that what's the word when they're not quite charged yet? Like mm. they were being they were being charged. If that's um. the right word of being paedophiles, and then he was like outing them outside the court and recording and saying they were saying they were paedophiles and posting it online. Then he got put in prison for I believe eight months. Oh, there you go. So definitely, can. Um, but do you reckon uh, there's you're going to see a lot less women in like certain workplaces than now? I hope not, because no, they'll I don't be like, so. oh, I, think it's the opposite the I don't know, I better not hire her. This is what I hope and not. what's the thing with the attractive women? Like, so they said, nineteen percent are less. Nineteen uh, percent of men would be reluctant to hire an attractive woman. Um, it's most likely just. A man's just stupid way of thinking. I don't. Okay, so I've never been. What uh, my behavior around women has never been. Uh, I don't know. I've just have I been just brought out, brought up right. I, I don't get it. Like I don't see in like the way I act around women. I don't think the way I act around women. If that makes sense, I don't second guess myself. Yeah, you I, don't go. Oh I'm, my gosh, is the woman approaching? Oh my gosh, how am I going to? Handle this situation. Yeah, and I like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm yeah, never. I'm never, I'm never in that. And like, if someone says something, I go, I'm sorry. Like, huh? I'm, uh, like if 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 she's taken offense to it or something, I be, I, I apologize. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't mean to offend you, but obviously you took offense, so I apologize for offending you. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I've never, I've never thought this hard in how to. Yeah. But I guess like there's a lot of this stuff happening mainly in America, so that's where they're sort of. No, we have to do a, like a behavior course. Yeah, we're doing one. We're oh. doing one, and like yeah. I've missed the I missed the course, so they've rebooked me in, yeah. and we're doing. Yeah, but every company has like behavior, like yeah. or is it specifically We've, towards women? Because there are, like you said, there are a few women entering the workforce now in our industry. It's like we have to have this, this uh, two hour. Uh, not a seminar, what a, a meeting. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. like m- mine was more in the sense where what happens if someone reports an issue? Yeah, like what steps you need to take to cover your butt? Mm. Oh, cover you. Oh, okay, so this is another thing, right? So they said you can't say what you think, right? Like you can say what you think, but if you got to think of, wait, if someone hears it, <laughs> oh gosh, if someone what? hears it and gets offended, yes. yeah. You Every, could be in trouble for that. Yeah, so you're having a if like a private what? if you're having a private conversation mm-hmm. and someone walks past and hears that conversation, mm-hmm. you could be in trouble yeah. for that. See, everyone has the right to be to be offended. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of the main things they said to us. <laughs> That's it's like everyone has a right to be to offended. Be offended. Yes. It's um, So what might offend me won't offend Ernest, and what offends Ernest might not offend me. No, but, but I understand. It, it might Isn't offend it like, I, do I not also have the right to offend people though? Oh. No, you don't. Not if it's discriminatory. Not in the workplace. Oh, not in, in the, the workplace because you're a representative then, I guess. Yeah. But okay, let me. I would want to finish on this one because they say nineteen. Was it nineteen percent of men are less likely to employ an attractive yes. person? Okay, so listen to this one. I don't know. This is from 2016 though, so it might have changed. But mm-hmm. researchers from the University of Messina in Italy uh, sent over eleven thousand CVs to. 1,542 job openings uh, in Italy. Mm-hmm. Um, eight CVs per opening. Um, and basically, attractive women had a callback rate of 54%. Attractive men had a callback rate of 47%. However, unattractive women had a callback rate of only 7%. So that's oh. 54% for attractive, 7% for non-attractive. And unattractive men had a callback rate of 24%. So that's half of attractive men. Yeah. Firstly... How do they decide who was attracted and who wasn't? Personal preference. <laughs> the person, yeah, the person. That I want to know who did thing. that bit. It was like ugly, <laughs> pretty. It was oh like a Tinder. Oh my gosh! But for the <laughs> and then when they <laughs> swipe when, right, swipe right, <laughs> swipe left. Yeah. But when swipe they were right. choosing eleven thousand people, it's like um, we're either gonna like you're part of this study and you're either gonna be one of our attractive <laughs> or one of the n- unattractive. Um, I wonder if we, I wonder if they got told the data. Like I that. would not want to know. <laughs> Because you, you could walk out of there like, 
jumping up in the air, clicking your heels together, all like, oh my God, I'm an ugly person. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but maybe more interesting though, in a post-study survey, the researchers found out that 24 out of 25 of the people who reviewed the resumes or the CVs were women. So this is a woman's point of view is oh. they, are, they, so this isn't pointing the finger at men this time. This is saying women seem to find more attractive people, more employable. So here's the, here's a question. If, can it be reversed? What? A woman in power, could they get... No. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. what? <laughs> I thought you said you can't have a woman in power. <laughs> so it was, so a it woman was just a joke. <laughs> woman, in, woman in power, right, is about to hire uh, a good-looking man. Yes. Could she get be? Could she get sued for sexual harassment and all that kind of she stuff? She can be, but most men won't. It's not. It's not the act of Boy. hiring them which is a sexual harassment. Yeah, no. No, no, no. I'm saying once he's hired, and he mm. says, "Oh, and, she's done this." Well, yeah. If they're alone in the photocopying yeah, yeah, she's, room, she's pushed my bum. Yeah. Is that? Is that? I guess so, but the I, and uh, but it's just not as common. Yeah, because most men. That doesn't mean that's not answering any any of my questions. Can she no, 100%, be? Yes, there are cases the other way around. Is as there? Well. It happens. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. like there's a uh, um, Vic Mensa was on the radio and he told how what, the sh- female comedian mm. Hadish or something. Yes, Tiffany. Tiffany. She grabbed him by the. What? What, got, pa- what part's that? You know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Right. I love how you can just do like the sound and everyone knows exactly right. what you mean. It's yeah. the it's the hand movement as well. It's not the, just the sound. <laughs> yeah, I b- Maxi can't see his hand movement. You know what I'm doing? So yeah, Tiffany, uh, he said he, she grabbed him by the... Um, you wait, know. wait, wait, wait. Are you sure that's fact or are you just allegedly? Okay, this was <laughs> on something I heard on YouTube. <laughs> right, <laughs> we just want to clear that up. Right. All right, Tiffany, we want to clear it up. Allegedly. She's grabbed him by the Yoohoo. <laughs> 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 right? I don't know. That was a different sound. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, you're sounding like they were doing something. <laughs> Anyways. Right? And he said basically Tiffany kind of sexually asked me and had a laugh. He was laughing about it. Mm. But technically she did. Grabbing him by a Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Mashed potatoes, you know? Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly grabbing him. All right. I, w- I wasn't her hand, so I don't know if she did or not. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> This week on Max Facts. Max Facts. Max Facts. Max Facts. <laughs> okay, so my question for you this week is, which bird do you think has the most feathers? Definitely not those awful Australian ones where you can see the English. blood. No, where you can see the blood under their wings. Chicken. Chicken. Turkey. Uh, Here's something like chicken or turkey. Ostrich. Flamingo. Peacock. He said, name the bird. I'll go. Name every bird. I'll go. (laughs) Ostrich. (laughs) Ostrich. I'll go flamingo. No, it's got to be like the biggest bird, no? This is my guess. You just (laughs) keep your guess. What's your guess, Siege? I'm going chicken. Chicken or turkey? One of those two. Ostrich. All right. (laughs) So, in general, the bigger the bird, the higher number of feathers. But. The oh. actual bird <laughs> with the most amount of feathers is a penguin. Hashtag don't celebrate too early. <laughs> penguin? Yeah. Just for curiosity, out of, out of us three, who was the most right? Me. What do you mean? I guess flamingo. I don't know. What was it? Flamingo, flamingo chicken, and ostrich. 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 I and reckon it, ostrich has the most feathers out of those. No, but can we look this up to get the actual answer? What are you going to look up? What's, uh, what? Which bird has the most feathers out of this bird, this bird, and this bird? I, I don't know if there's I a want an, for that. I want, a, I want an answer. That is so specific. <laughs> okay. Who's heard of the game Ancestors? Uh, not me. No. Not, not me. I hadn't either, but imagine this game, right? You turn it on, 
There's <laughs> <laughs> That's a good start. You have to spend every single step. <laughs> <laughs> CJ's closed his eyes and he's d- turned the knob to turn the game on. Right. Okay. There's no instructions or very little instructions. You get dropped into a rainforest as a tiny primate and you have to survive. All of a sudden, there's dangers all around you and you just leg it. You're just running. You're trying to find like somewhere to sort of hide, whatever. So this game, Ancestors. Yes. If that sounds interesting. Yes. You need to play it. It's basically a survival game, first and foremost. So you're gathering resources. You're what like is it on? Managing, don't know, daily needs. Um, it's like Sims. You start meeting other primates, I think. <laughs> and <laughs> no, no, it's not because there's no instructions. So basically it's trying to take you back to our ancestors in a world where they didn't know when how to survive. you say primate, survive. cavemen? Pre-humans. Pre-humans. So, yeah. Okay. So pre-humans. not like um, full Humans. chimpanzees or something. Not Hobo sapi- Homo sapiens. Yeah, maybe those ones. Homo huh? The ones that were just kind of like cavemen kind of, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Continue. Um, so this is in a world where you might think like they might pick up something, but they might not yet know how to transfer one object to the other hand. Okay. And then oh, they haven't got thumbs yet. They don't. They haven't figured out everything. Okay, so yeah, yeah. as you're moving around, you come out of your safe little cave that you've that you've made. Yeah. You're learning new things. Then you actually um, you Applying. start a, a, you start getting access to other things in the game that right. makes sense that you're able to do and stuff like that. You grow skills basically. Yeah. And let's see. You inter you explore uh, yeah as you more as you explore and interact more with the world yeah you fill your skill tree there's a skill tree so you press on your skill tree and it's like this visualize it's like brain nerve impulses that make connections and it grows as you're like learning new the things more, it the just more looks, you learn it just sounds the more you really learn the smarter you get is that what ha- basically yeah yes so at first your but your basic things is food water survival from predators. And then you get smarter, and you're, does you have this more game, skills. This, does this game um, say more about you as a person? I don't know. What do you mean? Because like your basic needs are going to be different. Like people, what people think are the yes. What? What am I saying? Oh, are you saying how everyone's ba- what people think everyone's basic needs are different for everyone? Yeah, like what at people, the moment, what people think is important. Is going to be different to every. Yes. Is that what happens in this? Does it give you? Do you go on different trajectories? You can because I guess the more you exp- like, you might choose. I think the creators of this one is maybe like Assassin's Creed, where yeah. it's really just an open world and you just explore. It's the same creator. It is. Okay. So this is an open world. You just explore wherever you want. Okay. And venture out as far as you want. Okay. And then every so every now and then. The predator might come for you and you just like freak out and try and like find where to hide. And then if it's too late and you just haven't found where to hide, you end up passing out and wake up back in your cave. Yeah. I don't know. Something like okay, that. Okay. It's on PS4, Xbox and computer, PC. Okay. It's but coming out in 2020. Is it? Mm-hmm. That's what it says. Is this a game that would intrigue you, CJ? Not really. Oh, oh it cool. sounds so intriguing. It does. I think it's... um. Like, well, at the end of the game, what's the goal of this game? Survival. To evolve into a human? Maybe you evolve. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But it sounds a bit, you, you start off as um an ape. Yeah. By the cover. And then you grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and change. Evolve. So you, into you a like human? evolve. Do yeah. you ever like... Have to be reborn as a new thing, or you just evolve as you as the game goes on. I am not too sure. I'm just looking at the cover of it, and it has like a an ape. And then mm-hmm. I assume it's evolved into the next part, and then evolved again. I said, I, I've not hmm. looked hey, at. It. Hey, Maxi, you know, um, there's ho- Homo sapiens, right? What were the mm-hmm. other ones similar to um w- the ones that we killed off? The home- Do- uh, Homo Deus. Is it Homo Deus? 
Um, what the ones we no. talk? About? No, 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 no. Uh, oh. Do you know what I'm Homer. talking about? Homer. Yeah, yeah. Homer. <laughs> oh, I just watched a video, right? Opposite, I'm watching yeah. an image. It said, "Inspired by true events." <laughs> <laughs> And, and then it says, and and then it says it? Africa. What was that? The Neanderthals. So I wonder, I wonder if this game can go like we split off into different humans. Like, oh, in the in the game. Yeah. So we don't like. I wonder if you like become a ne- Neanderthal, mm. and what kind of yeah. human you'd actually become. Like depending on what options you chose to take. Yeah. And what skills you you. Gained from those options yeah. depends on what sort you, of you don't become the traditional human that mm. you are today. Is that is that what happens, or is the end to be the traditional human? I don't know. I oh. guess the the hard thing is like how does a game keep up? Like how can one game like there's an infinite amount of options, isn't there? Like, yeah, it just exponentially every time you make one decision like out of ten, and then the next one there's another ten decisions. Like it just exponentially increases. So there's how does the game keep up with that? Because like in Assassin's Creed, it's an open world, but there's still all the missions and stuff you do are the same. Like you can go on Google and figure yeah. out how to do that. Maybe it's the same as that. Have done it. You probably have to do missions and yeah. evolve that way. Maybe it's the same as yeah. that then. Oh, okay. Because obviously, like it, what you're saying, Deb, would be amazing. Because obviously, every single time you start, just like the butterfly effect, that yeah, you would never ever ever end up in exactly the same form. Like that could never, that wouldn't happen. But obviously, in this game, it's it's not like that. It's probably like. X amount of options you could end up in, and then the way you do your make your decisions is where you end up. Uh, uh, they would have to apply some sort of AI simulation to this, right? Like, if you were nah. to have the unlimited, it's no, it would never be unlimited. But it could possibly. How the only way it would be unlimited is every time someone makes a decision, the computer then has to remake the yeah. next decision for them. Do you know what I mean? Like every single time. They oh. couldn't just create all of them in one go. It has to be like very live that someone made this decision. Let's quickly make the rest of the game in front of them. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Oh, yeah, man. and that probably wouldn't be able to happen. Yeah. Why? We're way too big. Well, the amount of people playing and then someone's having to design the rest of the game based on your decision and then you're making new decisions. Are you saying we don't have the, the power? Manpower yeah. to like re... Re-engineer or that? We... It could, could, <coughs> is there an AI system that could... Oh man, I'm pretty sure they. They sure. Maybe that would have taken into consideration like the most popular decisions in testing. So but what we're saying is on on a live like the AI says this person made this decision. No one's made that decision yet. Let's see what um decision, what what the next options could be for that person. The AI has to quickly make it in the same way when people play chess. When when you play chess on uh, chess dot com it shows you how many people have been in this exact position before. And once you made about 20 to 30 moves, it's often nobody's ever been in that position before. So there's no like, because it says basically, if in the first five moves, it says experts have been in this position uh, like 150 times and most of them made this move. So it suggests yeah. what the best move is. But once you get to like 20, move, 30 moves in and only 20 or 30 moves in, no one has ever been in that position before. Huh. So then the AI has to then calculate what it thinks is the best move instead of what the human thinks is the best move. So I'm saying like in this situation, once you get past the first three, like not even many, like 10, 20 decisions, it's going to be like an open game. Like you can't create anymore. So then it has but to be an like, AI that bought, live jumps on top and gives you more options. If you've bought a PS4 game that you're playing, that can't be up- updated, can it? No, that's okay. what Max is saying. This is, a, this is a different... Uh, oh. Oh, or if you if you put it in your PS4, does that connect to oh, the internet? You can and connect then... it to the internet. Yeah. Um... There'll be an update, but what they'll do is they'll probably update the most popular decisions. But I think yeah. without trying to get away from the constructs of the PS4, and if it's an open platform like Max is saying, and the eight, oh man, it'd just be interesting if they made a game like that. If okay. they, if they have, because the, wait, wait, oh, no. no, but like I'm saying, <laughs> they could one day, but not at the moment. Yeah. Oh, okay, the open ended. Never ending open end. Because from the like um from the ape and then when we were evolving, how many main um humans were made? Like what kind of how many different humans were made from the when we came from the monkeys? Was it just two? How, was well, it it's, it's it's hard to tell, but the there's I think there was like four Four main ones? Four, five. Four main... I can't remember the names, but they were like... There was some in 
Asia, East Asia, there was some. In Europe, there were some. In Africa is where like the main ones started. Yeah. But basically, from Africa, they walked up to Europe, and then Europe. I think they become the Neanderthals first, and then from Africa, they also uh, migrated to like Asia, and then that was a different set of humans again. Because at those times, when they got there, they were so isolated from the other humans, yeah. they were just going on their own evolutionary trajectory. Uh, I think yeah. there was, from what I know, there was four main ones. Okay. And then, it just but be, then they sort of split into sub ones. It'd be so well. interesting, We're, like coming from the four main ones. Gibbons, oh, whatever. orangutans, and then, gorillas, chimpanzees, and then... Wouldn't that be like, wouldn't you want to see what kind of world there'd be if the other, if the other species dominated? Like if our species didn't dominate, what kind of we world would... We wouldn't be, yeah, yeah, we wouldn't be here. I always think that. Do you? I have like, never thought about it once. <laughs> I, I think, but before us, before like humans in like however many thousands of years ago, hundreds of thousands of years ago, there wasn't a dominant species. That wasn't how it worked. It was always everyone, it was like an ecosystem, right? If yeah. one becomes too dominant, they'll kill off all their prey and then they die. Yeah. So then they weren't dominant anymore. Right. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, and a lot of that. Weird, isn't it weird strange how all the other animals used to be like giants, like massive? Like even the platypus, which I just learned about last week at school. <laughs> Back in dinosaur days, was like three feet long. I think that's because <laughs> humans compared humans to now killed humans killed all the big animals because they were easy to hunt. Yeah. Oh. It's uh, it's interesting. It's an interesting game. It's interesting where this can take it. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the B Side Word. Make sure if you enjoyed it to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe and drop us your thoughts in the comments down below. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. bell. Hit the bell. Hit the bell.